여러분 안녕하세요. 안녕하세요. Professor Yang, I noticed today that many students are reading the novel Born, 1982, by Kim Ji Young. Is there any particular reason for this? Yes, because this book was made into a movie, so everyone is very curious about it. Oh, I see. In Korea, there are indeed many famous works of modern literature. Are there others that have been made into films? Indeed, there are many more works of this kind. Today, let's take a look at modern Korean literature. In this lesson, we will continue in chronological order to talk about Korean literature in the Joseon Dynasty and modern and contemporary times. Because King Sejong of the Joseon Dynasty created the national alphabet of Hangul, the literature after him was no longer constrained by Chinese characters, and it flourished as a result. In terms of education and civil service, the Joseon Dynasty expanded the Gwagyo examination system, first introduced in Korea during the Goryeo Dynasty. While Goryeo only set up Confucian schools in major prefectures and counties, the Joseon dynasty went further by establishing these schools in all of the prefectures and counties of Joseon Korea. The Joseon government also provided funding for the teaching of Confucian classics at these schools. This vigorous promotion at the state level led to widespread proficiency in the Chinese language and writing system among Korean scholars at this time. Women during this period could not seek a formal education. Instead, they could only rely on homeschooling. However, this pivoted women of the era to take to advocating for the broad adoption of Hangul. The Joseon dynasty lasted for 500 years. This period covered the rise to power of both the Ming and the Qing dynasties. The two Chinese dynasties established very different diplomatic relationships with the Joseon dynasty, which led to drastically different attitudes towards the two Chinese dynasties in Korea. For example, in the early years of the Ming dynasty, Zhu Yuanzhang, the first emperor of the Ming dynasty, officially recognized the Joseon dynasty and named it as a country that China would never invade. Later, in the 16th century, the Ming emperor Wan Li sent troops into Korea to repel Japanese invaders. This act helped the Joseon dynasty to defend its homeland and elevated the friendship between the two states to an all-new level. The Joseon dynasty built many structures and works of architecture to commemorate the Ming dynasty as its benevolent and friendly neighbor. This gratitude continued even after the fall of the Ming dynasty, at which time the Joseon dynasty still insisted on using the name Ming to refer to its Chinese neighbors. What is clear from such stories is that, during the Ming Dynasty, China and Korea were friendly neighbors with many exchanges of goodwill between them. The Qing Dynasty maintained a much different relationship with Joseon Korea. Not soon after the Manchus rose to power, their army invaded Korea, with forces reaching Nam Han Sen Son, a mountain fortress southeast of modern-day Seoul. The Qing government insisted King Ingjo, the 16th ruler of the Joseon dynasty, to bow nine times to the Qing emperor at Sam Jongdo. The military strength of the Qing dynasty forced Joseon Korea to capitulate. However, despite this official action, negative sentiment towards the new Qing rulers ensued in Korea. Of course, over time, as the Joseon dynasty witnessed the strength and prosperity of the new Qing rulers, Attitudes gradually changed to be less bitter. The literature of this period closely mirrored this and other historical events and changes that occurred. For example, towards the end of the 16th century, Japan launched a war of aggression against the Joseon dynasty. Although this war ended with the Ming-Joseon coalition as victorious, the war still caused massive damage, the devastation of which had a lasting effect on Joseon society. Scenes of bloodshed and ravaged villages struck a chord with Joseon writers, profoundly influencing the literature of the time. Whereas, at the beginning of the Joseon dynasty, lyrical works of literature rose on the successes of centuries-old literary traditions in Korea, 
It was during this period that narrative writing would bring Korean literature to new heights of creative achievement with impressive results. Hangul opened a new avenue in the development of Korean literature. To represent this history, in today's lecture, we will focus on narrative works of literature that were written in Hangul. Though, we will also discuss two representative lyrical works written during this period as well. The Shijo of the Joseon Dynasty built on the achievements of Shijo written in the Goryeo Dynasty. Shijo writers of this period were no longer exclusively from the scholar official class. Rather, people of all backgrounds and professions wrote Shijo. Among the thousands of Shijo that remain today, many of the works are by unknown writers. One well-known Shijo is Winter Solstice Moon, which was written by Huang Jini, a prolific Shijo writer and Joseon Gisang which is a courtesan of the Joseon imperial court that was typically proficient in dance, song, poetry, and the art of conversation. The night of winter solstice is long. Our cut out a piece from it by hand, folding it double and putting it under the spring quilt. When you come back, I'll pull it out to lengthen the night. This exquisitely composed shijo expresses the rich depth of emotions felt when a lady waits for her beloved at night. The poem cleverly expresses abstract concepts in vividly concrete terms, cutting out a piece of the night and pulling it out again. These vivid descriptions speak to the precious moments of the reunion of lovers and the bitterness of separation. The Shijo, Interchamber Lament, is another representative piece of poetry from this period. It was composed by an aristocratic woman from the early Joseon dynasty. Although there is some uncertainty around who exactly the author of this piece was, this Shijo is generally attributed to Ho Nan So Hon. It was only yesterday that I was young. How is it that I've already grown so old? Recalling the joyous days of my youth is a hopeless endeavor. Complaining about my age catches my throat, chokes me with tears. My father begot me, my mother raised me out of much difficulty. They never dreamt that I'd be with a prince or a duke, but only wished that I'd be with a gentleman. My past three lives were full of grievances, but now I've met my loved one under the moon. In my dreams, I met a young, chivalrous man in the Chinese capital of Chang'an. Ho Nan Sohan, sister of famous novelist Ho Gun, was talented, but she had a life full of suffering and pain. After getting married at the age of 15, not only did her child die at a very young age, but she also died at an age of only 27. Reading Interchamber Lament, we can gain some perspectives into the lives of aristocratic women of the Joseon dynasty. The lyrics are elegantly composed, revealing the literary expertise and education of Joseon women. Yet, the release of untethered emotions in the poem also speaks to their struggles, through the work, the writer conveys a dissatisfaction with married life and a shame of not living up to her parents' expectations. Kim si Sup, known under the pen name Mel Well Dong, was a Joseon scholar who was well educated in the classics and poetry from childhood. He imitated the work New Stories Told While Trimming the Wick by Chu Yo to write his own work of New Stories of the Dragon Turtle, Gumo Shinwa, which is generally recognized as the first Korean work of narrative literature. The five stories in Gumo Shinwa capture, through a fanciful imagination, topics like young love and tragic love, while also vividly recounting the lives and stories of the Joseon people. As the younger brother of Ho Nan So Hon, Ho Yun, had studied under Yi Dal, a well-known Joseon poet. Yi was the son of a concubine, so he couldn't inherit a title and lived a life in shame. 
The experience of his teacher, Yi Dal, deeply touched Ho Gun. As a progressive writer, Ho also hoped to reflect in his novels the reality of peasant struggles. He replicated the narrative format seen in the Chinese novels Water Margin and Journey to the West using the social conditions of Joseon Korea after the Imjin Japanese War as the background to write a Hangul novel, The Tale of Ho Gil Dong. This piece is considered a classic in Korea and in the past few decades it has been repeatedly adapted into many films and television dramas. In the tale, Ho Gil Dong a Korean Robin Hood criticizes how irrational class differences are between firstborn children and children born to concubines in the feudal society of Joseon Korea, through vividly depicting his unremitting struggle against the feudal ruling class. Ho Gun's work of fiction provides insights into peasant struggles of the Joseon dynasty. Moreover, an overseas paradise, the island of Jay, in the novel, manifests Hogun's vision of an idealized alternative to Joseon society. The work, The World Inside a Pillow, by the Tang writer Shen Ji Ji, and its later popular adaptation, The Story of Han Dan, by the Ming Dynasty playwright Tang Xianzu formed the models for the romantic fantasy The Dream of the Nine Clouds by the 17th century Korean novelist Kim Manjong. Kim wrote this work during his exile to comfort his mother. Its theme was that glory and wealth are nothing more than dreams. The work reflects the Buddhist idea that form is emptiness. In the novel, the eight female protagonists are all willing to obediently serve the same husband, which, among other things, reflects the reality of gender inequality in Joseon Korea. The historical background of the novel also shows the importance of women in the creation of novels in Joseon Korea. Kim Man-jong dedicated The Dream of the Nine Clouds to his mother. In particular, while he was in exile and couldn't see her, he wrote it as a means to comfort her in his absence. During the Joseon dynasty, numerous men would write novels specifically to please women readers. So, we can conclude that this female audience in the Joseon dynasty contributed greatly to the development of Hangul literature. In addition to prose, documentary literature of the late Joseon dynasty is also worth mentioning. This genre of literature mainly developed through two distinct forms. The first was travel journals, exemplified by travel accounts of visiting Beijing, or Yin Heng Rok, and the other was collected stories and memoirs from the imperial court, headed by memoirs of Lady He Gyeong. This genre is referred to as Han Zhong Rok. With frequent envoys to Ming China, travel journals became popular early on in the Joseon dynasty. These travel journals were at first also referred to by the name travel accounts of visiting the imperial capital, Zhou Chongrok. Later, due to Joseon dissatisfaction with the Qing dynasty, this form of literature gained the much more plain name of travel accounts of visiting Beijing. These journals recorded what Joseon scholars saw and did in China and made observations and analyzed the customs and people of China. Yen Heng Rok now has gained much value in historical research is an important resource for studying this period of Chinese history and the historical relationship of cultural exchanges between China and Korea. Apart from travel journals, the three masterpieces of court literature, which are memoirs of Lady Haegyeon, named Han Jokrok, Record of Queen Inhyeon, and Diary of the Year Kechok were representative pieces of a unique genre of imperial court memoirs and are considered to be great works of literature in Korea. Han Jong Rok was a compilation of a set of memoirs written by Lady Haegyeon, who was the biological mother of Jongjo, the 22nd king of the Joseon dynasty and the wife of Crown Prince Sado. Her memoirs were written over several years specifically in 1795, 1802, 1805, and 1806. Not only did she record her life within the imperial court 
as well as the grievances suffered by her family through various political struggles, but in the memoirs, she also explained the reasons for the execution of her husband, Crown Prince Sado, in 1762. Her nephew asked Lady Hagion to leave some written records to be kept by the home family, to which she agreed. And in 1795, when she was 61 years old, she started writing the memoirs of her troublesome life. Lady Hagion entered the palace at the age of 10. By the time that she started writing at age 60, she had spent half of a century in the Joseon court and witnessed the transition of power from Yongjo to her son Jongjo. As a letter to her nephew Hong Suyong, Lady Hagion not only pointed out her motive for having written the piece in the preface, but she also emphasized at the end using heartfelt and eloquent words to her nephews and grandnephews, the importance of moral lessons. Both Han Zhong Rok and Record of Queen Inhyeon were written by court women using Hangul. They record historical scenes and events from the perspective of women and provide a unique perspective into life within the imperial court of Joseon Korea. They form a unique genre in the history of Korean literature and also have special literary value in the world as a whole. In addition, many works of literature also reflect the collapse of the caste system in the later Joseon dynasty, and the changes that were to happen were profound. Park Ji-won was one of the most outstanding realist thinkers in Korea in the 18th century. As an outstanding realist writer, his novel, The Tale of Ho Sang, was representative of his reformist ideas. His other work, The Tale of the Yambang, pointed out much criticism at the late Joseon aristocracy. The Tale of Chun Huang, a novel adapted from a pansary, which is a form of Korean musical storytelling, showed how oral and written traditions intersected at this time, through the love entanglement between Yi Meng Huang and Sung Chun Huang, each of whom came from vastly different castes. The novel represents the worldview and political ideals of the late Joseon people, and their demands for both equality and social liberation. The modern history of countries in East Asia is full of war and devastation. Korea had to experience hardship and struggles before a path towards brighter and happier times. Since modern times, the Korean people have had an indomitable spirit of great perseverance, and this spirit is reflected in their literary works. Lyrical writing in Korea over the past century has served as a kind of heroic struggle for finding beauty and peace in an age of turbulence and tyranny. Choi nam Sun's masterpiece, From the Ocean to Youth, is considered one of the first modern works of Korean poetry. The poet Trey, through lyrical verse, depicts the future of his modern motherland. Splash, splash, splat, swash. Hit, break, breakdown. Mountains as high as heaven, stones as large as a house. What are these to me? Do you know my might? The sea is roaring. Hit, break, breakdown. Splash, splash. Splat, splash. The poem, From the Ocean to Youth, appeared in the first issue of the magazine Sonyeon, which is regarded as one of the first modern magazines in Korea. The poet and lyricist Choi Nam Son said that the future of the motherland lies in the youth and also lies in the modernity seen overseas. Through his work, Trey affectionately remarks that he believes that young people are the key to building a better future in Korea, one that would borrow from the successes and progress of other modern nations and help to liberate Korea from Japanese rule. It's worth noting that, when Trey Nanson composed this piece, he was only 17 years old. In other words, he was exactly the youth that he mentioned in his poem, and he eventually would become one of the leading members of the Korean 
independence movement. Of course, during this period, besides lyricists like Che Non Son, who was interested in using poetry as a means of political commentary, there were also poets who used their imaginations to create and celebrate poetic beauty, distracting from the social upheaval and political turmoil of the time. Kim So Wool's Azaleas uses azalea blossoms as a symbol of the beauty and strength of love. The poem recounts the deep grief felt when a love comes to an end and expresses a certain spirit of unfettering devotion. When you're tired of me and want to leave me, I will send you off without a word. Up on Yangsan, in Yongbyon, I'll pick some azaleas and scatter them on the road where you go. Step after step, there be scattered petals placed. Tread gently as you go. When you're tired of me and want to leave me, even if you leave me, I won't shed any tears. In terms of narrative works of literature, Lee Kwang Soo's first piece, Heartless, Mujong, is probably the first modern Korean novel. By expressing the ideals of nationalism and a thirst for progress, his novel reflects the demands of Korean youth of the time for liberation from the colonial Japanese. At the time when it ran as a series, the novel gained great popularity among Korean youth. Mujong tells the stories of four protagonists, Lee Hyung-sik, an English teacher, Park Yong-che, the daughter of Lee's mentor and his fiancée, Kim Song-hyung, a woman who planned to study in the United States, and Pyong-uk, a woman who planned to study in Japan. After experiencing a series of both exciting and upsetting events, the four of them found their calling in a life as grassroots educators with a mission to liberate Korea. Lee Kwang Soo was born into a small peasant family in 1892. At the age of 10, he lost his parents to disease, becoming an orphan. Later, he went to study at Meiji University in Japan with the help of Advance in Unity Society, Il Chin Ho, a pro-Japanese group. After returning to Korea in 1910, he soon went back to Japan and studied at Waseda University. Lee Kwang Soo drafted the February 8th Independence Declaration with other Korean students while he was studying in Japan, and later went into exile in Shanghai to join the provisional government. However, after 1937, his political stance gradually changed to pro-Japanese, and he later changed his name to the Japanese name of Kaiyama Mitsuro. In 2009, South Korea published a free volume dictionary of collaborators. Lee Kwang Soo's name was on the list. Although Lee Kwang Soo left the literary masterpiece of Mujong, his pro Japanese actions hurt his legacy in his homeland of Korea. After liberation from Japanese occupation, Korean literature entered a new stage of development. The literature of this time concentrated on the joys of Korean national independence and the development of a prosperous economy, in contrast with the confusion and bewilderment of past generations. In this new era of Korean history, lyrical and narrative works of the time expressed great hope for a brighter and better future in Korea. Park Doo-jin's son is among them. Rise the sun, rise the sun, with a new face, the beautiful sun, rise! Beyond the mountains, above the mountains, devouring darkness. Beyond the mountains, both night and day, devouring darkness. The young face, the beautiful sun, rise! In this poem, Park describes the sun as a symbol of justice and light, that drives away darkness and evil, and also as a symbol of inexhaustible vitality. The majestic sun forms a masculine imagination, and this masculinity is unique in modern Korean poetry. 
The development of capitalism in modern South Korea went hand in hand with the exploration of a democratic system of government. The poetic works of this period express the Korean people's longing for democracy. One example is Burning Desire by Kim Ji Ha. Of the narrative works of literature of this period, one work that has to be mentioned is Ha Gun Chen's The Suffering of Two Generations. Korea achieved independence in the liberation period and started towards a path of revitalization and development. However, the civil war that followed became another lingering pain for modern Koreans. The Suffering of Two Generations by Ha Gun Chen follows the story of a father and son. Pak Man Do, the father, upon hearing that his son had survived the war and returned home safely, rushes to the train station to pick up his son, only for himself to be kidnapped by the Japanese invaders. Pak Man Do later loses an arm while at an internment camp, becoming permanently disabled. Although the son was lucky enough to survive the war, he lost one leg. Though the main shock of the story comes when the father and son finally meet, and they don't know whether they're rejoiced or sad. Through the tragic experiences of the father and son in the story, the novel represents the historic tragedies of a war-stricken nation. Though, the suffering of two generations also has a bright side to it. Although the war made for a torturous and extremely cruel existence, the willingness of people in the story to overcome adversity and strive for a better life stayed unbroken. To summarize the entire history of Korean literature, first, ancient literary traditions, which were originally oral stories, reflect the Korean understanding of the world and the greater cosmos. Next, Hamun literature, which was the first form of written literature in Korea, represents the zenith of cultural exchange between China and Korea. Last, Hangul literature, which grew to prominence in the Joseon dynasty, served as an important catalyst for the development of modern literature in Korea. The modern and contemporary literature of Korea directly mirrors episodes in recent Korean past, from Japanese occupation to the Korean War. Literature under Japanese occupation exposed many great human atrocities, but it also revealed the ambitions of Korean youth to save their country. The literature of later periods in modern Korea turned to both themes of hope and hesitation, reflective of the impacts of war and economic changes during this leg of Korean history. The history of Korean literature is an exciting, ever-changing story whose most exciting part is always the next chapter. In this course, we have studied many recent and modern works of Korean literature. Some of the works have been made into TV series and others into films. In the next lesson, we'll learn more about Korean pop culture. 또 만나요!